Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. And this time around, we're going to screen for toxic stocks mm. with Kevin Matris, our top stock screener here at Zax.com. It sounded like you said uh, top stocks, but no, no toxic. toxic. And right. uh, didn't we just talk about this, it seems, not that long ago? Are we back to this spot again? Yeah, it does seem like deja vu all over again, transported back to 2008. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look. I'm all for living in the past, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> right. I'm going to go back to 1986. <laughs> that was a good year. It was. Uh, check it out. The, uh, the, we are now, or at least it appears at the time of this uh, this talking, yes. uh, that uh, that we have made it into official bear territory. Mm -hmm. So every time we go into official bear territory, this is a screen that I like to to pull out again. Uh, and, you know, if you were to look at this screen, Toxic Stocks, uh, this thing did fantastic back then. First off, though, there are differences between what appears to be the bear market that we are going to be entering into for this year and, you know, what we saw back in 07 and 08, because back then it seemed as if there was no place to hide. Now, to be fair, there were some bullish strategies that did good and made some money, uh, but it was the short sellers mm -hmm. who cleaned up. And knowing that, I think now is an appropriate time to start looking at short selling strategies. And uh, again, as you said at the top, this one is called Toxic Stocks. We're going to go through that in just a bit. Yeah, there are a lot of parameters to this one here, so let's yeah. get to it. All right. First off, let me just say, too, that the main theme of this screen is to try to find companies that are overvalued. I have found that these companies that, uh, that do have high valuations and this kind of thing, those are the ones that are most prone to fall. And really, it's companies with uh, overvalued valuations, underperforming growth rates, mm -hmm. and companies that are experiencing downward earnings estimate revisions. So let's go through the list, all yes, right? Let's do that. There's a lot of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, first one is I want to find companies with a price greater than or equals to $5. Generally, I do prefer to short stocks that are much higher in price, but again, cheap stocks go down in value as well. But I am drawing the line at five, but that also means we're including stocks that are, you know, $7, $8, $10, whatever, mm -hmm. as well as stocks that are $50, $70, $100. So drawing it at five, but we'd like to see things higher in price. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we're looking at companies that have an average daily share volume of, of 100,000 shares or better. The reason why this is important is you want to make sure that it is liquid enough, whereas if a, uh, a bear market rally ensues, you want to make sure there's enough activity where you can get in and get out quickly and easily. If you're trading something too thin, it's, it's really going to be difficult as people scramble to it to cover their shorts, all right? right. Anyways, let's get into the meat. Uh, the next one is we want the projected growth rate uh, to be less than the median for its expanded industry, which means we are looking for companies in the bottom half of their industry. This is putting underperformers on our radar screen, and nothing can sack a company more uh, than a company that is, you know, has a dour outlook on their growth, okay? Let's go to the valuation components. Uh, we are looking at companies with a P.E. ratio using F1 estimates of greater than 50. So again, P.E. ratios of greater than 50. In my statistical analysis studies, I have found that companies that have P.E. ratios of over 50 have a significantly higher probability of underperforming the market. So we want to put all of the odds of success and all of the probabilities of success in our favor. So we're looking at companies with these excessive P.E. ratios. Also, I want to find companies where the debt-to-equity ratio is greater than two times the median for its industry. So again, we're looking at companies where there is a high degree of assets that are financed through debt. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, a company with a high debt to equity ratio or, or a high level of debt, usually those are the ones that are the most vulnerable. And I believe those are the companies that are most vulnerable in bullish times and in bearish times. But especially right now, knowing that a lot of the crisis is being driven by concerns over the financial companies, right? Uh, going down the list, uh, we're looking at companies that have a percent change in F1 earnings estimates over the last 12 weeks to be less than zero. So again, 
Stocks receiving downward earnings estimate revisions have a tendency of receiving, you know, more downward earnings estimate revisions. So this is putting the uh, the odds in our favor. And then, for good measure, we also want to see the percent change in F2 earnings estimates over the last 12 weeks to be less than zero as well. Having this added measure, I think, is good because it really shows the conviction on the analyst's part. And again, I think since human nature, there is a tendency to be, you know, kind of overly optimistic. If they are saying the company doesn't look that good right now, and you know something, they're not looking that hot next year either. Usually that is a good sign that these companies are in at least some degree of trouble. Then let's go to the Zacks rank. We want to find companies where the Zacks rank is greater than or equals to three. So this includes holds, this includes sells, and it includes strong sells. Now companies that meet all of the above criteria that we just got done talking about, it is unlikely these companies are going to stay threes for long. But again, this does give us an opportunity for early entry. Uh, but this also, like I said, includes fours and fives. These are the worst of the bunch. So mm -hmm. these are going to pop up on your screen quite a bit. And then for good measure, this screen looks for companies that, uh, or, or the top seven companies, i.e. the worst seven companies with the worst Zacks rank. So if you want to put more stocks on your list, you can get rid of this item. So if there's 20 stocks coming through, you'll get all 20. If there's 30 stocks coming through, you'll get all 30. Then you can do some qualitative analysis and make your selection. But if you want to trade a strategy just as a strategy per se, this narrows it down to a list that's very easy, very manageable. You're always going to get seven stocks, or, or I should say, no more than seven stocks at any point in time. Now, one of the reasons why I say top seven, I just want everybody to know this, is because the Zacks rank is uh, you know one through five. So when I say top seven, it's not qualitative. It's just simply a logic-based rule. So the top means the higher number, just in case anybody's wondering what I was talking about. So I am definitely talking about the worst Zach's ranks to flesh out this screen. All right. And as if that weren't enough, you have some other <laughs> statistics to give us, don't you? Yeah, the reason why I wanted to pull this one out and, uh, and just kind of put it on people's uh, radar screen is because in 2008, while the market was getting just creamed, this strategy using a four-week rebalancing period uh, produced an average compounded annual return of 120% even while the market was down nearly 40%. So there is hope that, <laughs> that people can make money as the market goes down. And another interesting fact is that even if you were to only have started to use this strategy once an official bear market was called, and back in 2008, the official bear market was called in July of 2008. Even if you waited until the middle of the year to start trading this bear strategy, it still generated over a 70% return. So it is not too late to consider a bear market strategy right now. Yeah, we should note that uh, as of this recording, while we're talking here, the market did cross into bear territory. Yeah, it was down about one and a half percent. We got a little bit over 20 percent down from the top, so it looks as if it's going to be an but official it, bear. At this point, uh, as of this recording, it right. hasn't closed there yet. has not closed So there. we can't say it's an official bear right. yet. Join us next week. <laughs> we'll update you on that. Uh, and so let me guess now. Uh, seven stocks only came through this screen. That would be a good guess. I'm only going to show five. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, here's five of them. Uh, we've got uh, Houston American, uh, LOGM, uh, MicroStrategy, RealPage Incorporated, and Cena Corp. By the way, let me just say, too, that, uh, that I have found that short strategies work best in bear markets. Not a great revelation there, but it's important that I point this out because I have found that even the best short selling strategies really struggle in bull markets. So I think the best time to really start employing a, bull, a bear market strategy in mass is when there is an official bear market and the time to stop using a bear strategy is once the official bear market is over with. We have a new bull market. But it looks as if right now there could be an official bear called, maybe within days, maybe within hours, mm -hmm. but something to look at and something to consider. All right, do you own any of these? Not yet. All right. Before we get out of here, we will remind you that a text version of this week's screen is available for your review on the homepage, zax.com, or at least you can access it 
off the home page. Just scroll down to you see Kevin's picture and click on the headline right next to it. If you want to learn more about the Research Wizard, the tool that Kevin uses to achieve all of these screens, zax.com slash research wizard is where you should look on the wide open web. With Kevin Matris on the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.